Hello. Like many of you, I've been looking at the NASA headline about the Parker Solar Probe, about why it is so hard to get to the sun. And I know the, the reason why, but they mentioned it on the site. Um, basically, you're a planet and you're moving around the sun with some speed, and it said you have to kill that speed in order to move inwards. And I thought, okay, well, why not take this a step further? Because I can. This is actually a really good example of um, how Orbiter can kind of teach concepts. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a number of scenarios and then fly them and see why the Parker Solar Probe actually decided to take the trajectory it did. So the first step, we're actually going to look at the International Space Station itself. Okay, so notice the International Space Station has a nearly perfectly circular orbit on the lower left-hand display. You see the gray circle and the green circle. That's our orbital speed, 7,420 meters per second. And in order to actually go down to the Earth, we would have to slow the vehicle down and then gravity would allow us to descend into the surface. It's very easy because we're very low to the Earth. Same thing applies to the moon. If I select the Earth as the orbit source, this is the moon's orbit around the Earth, as you can see here. Where's the Earth? There it is, that tiny little circle in the middle. That's because the moon is extremely high up, so we're actually not moving very fast. Our orbital velocity is uh, about 10, 12 meters per second. So like a planet around a star, the moon orbits the Earth. Okay, we're going to take this concept a step further by selecting the sun. Now we're displaying the Earth's orbit around the sun. First of all, look at the velocity. Stars are huge. We have 30 meters, 30 kilometers per second, given how far away we are, and that's the sun. That tiny little circle in the middle that you can't even see it. I can't even see it on my 2K display. So it's just the same, except stars are really big. So you go a lot faster and a lot higher up. Okay, so now what I've done is I've placed the Delta Glider in orbit around the sun at the same distance Earth is from the sun, one AU, but completely isolated from the Earth so that we can move as we need to. Okay, so I want you to notice the orbital speed of 29.84 kilometers per second, which you can see in the upper left of the red HUD display right now. We had to kill all that speed, and notice where I have the mouse cursor now. You can see 149 times 10 to the 9th meters, which is 1 AU. Now we're a little bit separated from the Earth itself. in order to be gravitationally independent of it. There's the Earth right there, just so you can see how distant we are. And what we're going to do is we're going to run the engines hard, full on, and we're going to kill all of the speed. And here we go. So the Parker Solar Probe is going to reach a minimum altitude of 7 million kilometers above the sun. So we're going to run our engines and let that speed drops until the peri uh, periapsis of our orbit reaches that altitude. By the way, this is the amount of delta V left that we can kill. As you can see, we're doing uh, 29, so 19 will not allow us to kill all the speed, but we're going to do as good as we can. And we are watching that number right there, PER, to get down to 7G. When it hits 7G, we're there. And I fast forward a little bit later. You can now see we're about to run out of fuel. We've still got 10 kilometers per second to go. and. Uh, We've got 9G, which is not 7. 
we've just run dry. So this does not work for the mission. And we can't do anything about it. Okay, using the magic of simulation, I've now placed us back in orbit. We're going to try a scenario. Uh, in this scenario, what we're going to do is repeat exactly what we did last time, except this time we'll be leaving from directly from Earth orbit. So what this is going to do is it's going to take advantage of the Oberth effect, and it will actually get us a little bit further than it did last time. Uh, because when you burn close to a gravitational source, you're going to actually pick up more velocity at infinity. Okay, and the Delta Glider is an amazing machine. It's better than anything that's been devised, a Delta Vore Heavy, better than a Saturn V, better than a BFR. How was it defeated by going to the sun, even though a little spacecraft like Parker Solar Probe could do it? So running the engines again. And now we're getting closer here. You can see we're now down to 17. Notice that we're not moving as fast because the Earth's gravity is now pulling us back. As we start to get higher above the Earth, we're going to be slowed down. This Earth will try and prevent us from disappearing, but we're beyond escape velocity, so there's nothing it can do. Uh, but because we're very close to the surface of the Earth, we're actually picking up more velocity than infinity. You notice the periapsis uh, radius is now down below eight. And look at the fuel, we're not out yet. And there is seven. So that's it, we've done it. Uh, we've got the orbit that we need, but look at how much fuel we wasted. The tank is almost empty. Now there's a better way that we can do this, but before we move on to that, let's take a look at the fruits of our labor. This is down around uh, 29 million kilometers as we start to get really close to the sun. This is quite a bit closer than Mercury. In fact, you would not want the window showing to the sun now. And this is what it looks like when you're at 7 million kilometers, which is the lowest the Parker Solar Probe will get. Look at how fast we're going. 170 kilometers per second. Almost as fast as the Parker Solar Probe, but not quite, because now we're going to try it the way NASA actually does it. In this way, Venus is actually on the way to the sun. And what we're going to do is we're going to chart a course to Venus and use something called a gravity assist. A gravity assist will allow us to move the spacecraft in ways that we wouldn't be able to normally. So this time it's predicting a velocity difference of about four kilometers per second. And if you notice, we're going to be burning into the retrograde sun orbit vector, but it's the prograde orbit vector for the Earth. And we actually have about 7.5 kilometers per second. We're gonna be losing quite a bit of that as we uh, commence our burn here, but some of that we'll hold on to because of the over effect. Okay. So we've now gone past escape velocity. Now if I zoom out, you can see how very quickly, very, very quickly, uh, we're lining up the path and we'll be done very soon. Okay, and 30, 20, 10, cut off. Okay, so the green line uh, represents the path we're going to be following between Earth and Venus. Notice that our periapsis radius is nowhere where we want it to be. Okay, so doing a first mid-course correction now in the middle of space. We're going to do a second mid-course correction here. We're about midway between Earth and Venus now. 
we're actually closer to the sun now than Venus actually orbits. Okay, so what this is doing is it's ensuring that we pass directly by Venus. If we don't pass it to within a few hundred miles, we're going to have an issue. And that does it. Okay, we're approaching Venus now, so we're going to refine our altitude here. So we're going to be targeting a flyby altitude of 300 kilometers, and we're also going to take a leading pass. Now we're coming up to planet Venus at this time. We're going to be making a leading pass around the planet, and that is going to change our orbital direct uh, trajectory. So all the magic happens because the planet redirects us. So this is where our orbit starts to curve us around the planet to stay with it. And as a bonus, you get to see a sunset on Venus. Now despite the fact that we're only 500 kilometers above the thick surface, the atmosphere will not cause a problem all the way down to 300 kilometers. It's barely noticeable. And the deal with gravity assist is you want to get as close to the planet as you can possibly get. Which in the case of Venus, it's about 300 kilometers for an object like the Delta Glider. Now if you'll note the path, it comes in from the upper left and goes out through the lower right with an angle. And that angle is the magic which is going to redirect us and lower the minimum altitude that we're going to get to the sun. So now we're coming out from Venus with our newly modified orbit which will take us even closer to the sun. And as you might expect, the gravity assist solves the problem. If you look forward, we had a, uh, a minimum altitude of about 89 uh, gigameters. So 89 million kilometers. And now that we're far enough away from Venus, we're going to change the orbit reference back to the sun. And we're going to see what our new minimum altitude is now that we've cleared Venus. And you'll note now the periapsis radius has dropped to 56 kilometers. So we went from about 89 to 56. That's a huge boost, and it required absolutely no engines other than the mid-course correction maneuvers. This is exactly how NASA does it. In fact, they're going to do seven flybys. So we can actually go into the transects again and start planning our second flyby. The only thing that we have to do is maneuver when we get closest to the sun and keep our orbit the exact same length to one Venusian year so that we sync up with it again and repeat the procedure and if you look at the orange dotted line if we take another pass with Venus that's where we're gonna end up next and you can very see see very well if you do that seven times over you're gonna get down there and look at how much fuel we have left in the tank by the way, 90% of that was used to leave Earth orbit. We don't have to use that again. It's just the 65 or so meters per second that we use. And if you have orbital predicts as good as NASA, even less than that. So I hope that gives you guys an understanding of how these things work. I know it's helped me. So thank you, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.